get you out of my mind It's like I feel it for the first time Been thinking about you all night I've been searching for this all my life You're just my type I've been looking for a boy who can treat me right Your dark hair with those eyes so bright They look into my soul and it sparks my life Can I take you there? Hey guys, um, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, I am a fourth year medical student, super original, but um, I guess a bit of a difference is I'm from the University of Auckland and this year I was placed in Waikato Hospital and the Mighty Tron. So that's where I am at the moment. A little bit of a different setup to my other videos. Um, but I thought, you know, we're in lockdown, what better way to commemorate lockdown, to celebrate lockdown than making a video. So, um, yeah, let's just jump right on in and get to it. I think like the first thing for me is like some general advice, okay? I wish someone told me that a lot of times you're going to feel a bit dumb and um, maybe this is an exaggeration, but your seniors will ask you lots of questions and in doing so they're kind of trying to find gaps in your knowledge um, so that you can go back home and like learn about this. But um, because of maybe how the New Zealand or westernized schooling system is, like when you go through school and university usually you get a big pat on the back for doing like anything well okay and it is not really like that in the hospital because it's a bit more old school um and you're used to your teachers or your lecturers kind of like bigging you up in high school that was like super great even in primary school but in the workforce like and specifically in the hospital with medicine that does not happen so uh, yeah no one's gonna be bigging you up okay if you get anything right so <laughs> that's the main thing um, I think something that everyone always wants to know is like are the consultants mean uh, well the answer to that is um, no <laughs> exactly like I said it um, because here's the thing like this might be controversial but in my experience like there's a general generational difference here some of the consultants were training and literally grew up in a time where society was even more patriarchal than it is today and if like you did something wrong it wasn't just like oh that's okay like a little pat on the back it was like you had to prove for your place in the hospital in the workforce just like anyone else and you really had to prove that you deserved respect for one of a better way to describe it um so I just think maybe that they can be more old school but like some consultants are so respectful you'll feel like you're part of the team they'll invite you to coffee they give you one-on-one -on -one teaching like personalized teaching if you will um and like you do remember the meaner ones but like overall there's definitely been more nice consultants than not I think the other thing is like just remember being fourth year is cool and everything but like in the hierarchy of the hospital, not even just doctors and house officers, like in the hierarchy of everyone who works in the hospital, you are the lowest, okay? And like, I'm only saying that to kind of make you maybe promote f humility, okay? I don't know, but like you are the lowest. Just think of it like in a crisis, they're not going to ask for you. Like you are not super crucial to making the hospital run. Um, so just remember that it's kind of a privilege to be there and a lot of the consultants and a lot of the staff they think that we should think it's a privilege to be there even though technically we're paying them and da 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 like it's just something to be aware of and just and how you carry yourself maybe let's like jump into a few of like what I did during the year a few of my runs and like we'll go from there the first run that I had was geriatrics which is like older people health, like older persons and rehabilitation. Um, it was a really good one to ease me into the hospital to learn like where things are, how things work, what charts are, <laughs> um, because you have to learn somehow. Um, it is a more slow paced run, like you won't necessarily be running around up and down stairs, um, but that was really good for me for my first run. 
Like geriatrics generally gets a bad rep and I think it's because it can be confronting. Like you are seeing people age and you're seeing you're seeing like quite the end of the spectrum. Not necessarily the end of life because that has multiple connotations. Um, but you are seeing things that are like age related. You're seeing like diseases that people tend to get in the older age, etc, etc. And you start to realize that your parents will be like that. Your whanau may be like that. Um, and it's kind of confronting to see that your, how that, how life happens, like the circle of life and just that kind of thing. And I think subconsciously that actually does affect people's perception of the run. I personally have had quite a bit of experience with older family members. And I think like I instinctively knew more about geriatrics than any of the other runs. Um, so I've personally found it super interesting from a medicine side of things. You, you learn a lot about pharmacology interactions. And um, I think for this one, the patients will make it or break it for you. I literally kept a book in geriatrics where I would write multiple things per day of things that the patients would say or do that were cute or kind of funny. Um, and that like I can genuinely say that's the only run I've managed to do this for it was literally just something that would just make my day and it kind of would make me laugh or give me warm fuzzies so that's kind of my experience with geriatrics um, the next one is general medicine this is super high yield as a forced beer like it's very good for the end of year OSCE learning and I personally had a really great team which I think as people older than you will tell you, your team will affect your experience of the run. <laughs> and um, I saw, so for this one, I had amazing consultants, registrars, house officers, even TIs, like really good people. And I learned so much and I just had such a wonderful experience with patients. Um, it just so happened that at the end of this run, like our whole team was experiencing a lot of death. Um, and I just want to say that some of these patients have stuck with me and I think they will stick with me for the rest of my life. I personally found that the patients taught me more about the conditions than the doctor or the textbooks. I think one good aspect of being a fourth year is that from the patient perspective you kind of carry some sort of authority because you're wearing a stethoscope, you're training to be a doctor, you're part of the team, but you're kind of you've retained that kind of maybe immaturity clinically, but like you've retained some sort of humanity that they feel like they can connect to you and they want to talk to you and give you a history. So like very good for learning, but you'll find that they tell you their fears, their worries, their concerns, and you get this really human element alongside the scientific um, aspect of things. Um, they might want to hug you, they might want to hold your hand. I would even get like kissed on the cheek sometimes. Um, and apart from it being life changing, uh, it makes you really realize what a, being a doctor is about. Then we have spec med, which is specialty med. And you kind of will get, depending on where you are, you'll get placed into two specialty med runs for three weeks each. Um, I was on respiratory and endocrine, so respiratory is the lungs, endocrine is uh, like hormones and stuff like that. So respiratory, very high yield, like I actually learned how to read chest x-rays. Um, I saw bronchoscopies, I went to a lot of different clinics, saw how spirometry was really graphed and done in the hospital. And um, there's a, like a wide range of consultants within the specialty. Like people focus on sleep, cystic fibrosis, COPD, um, interstitial lung disease, like all different kinds of things within one specialty. So that was quite eye opening. Um, endocrine, like you get to see really interesting cases because hormones like are very, the patients will present very specifically. And a lot of the patients have been through to their GP, they've been to other specialists, and then finally they're like, ah, oh, this is an endocrine thing. So you'll see, you get to see a bit of like the journey and how things work. Um, and patients just, yeah, have really niche symptoms and presentations, which is also really cool. 
Um, my next run was anesthetics, which was only two weeks, but I, oh, I loved anesthetics. Like I absolutely adored anesthetics. It was very physiology based, which I love because I'm super biased and physiology was my undergrad. Um, but in saying that, I haven't met anyone that didn't like or love anesthetics. So super good run, like you enjoy it. It was my first time being in theater which was so cool. Um, I'd never been in theatre, not as a patient, not as a student, nothing. Um, and I got to see a brain surgery. I actually spent a lot of time in neurosurgery. I got to see like open heart surgeries, a lot of different kinds of cardiac surgeries, emergency surgeries, C-sections, orthopedic, um, laparoscopy, las laparoscopy um, all kinds of things. It was so cool. In anaesthetics, I personally got to intubate a lot, bag mask, um, do IV lines, um, draw up drugs. I even poked myself with a needle. Super embarrassing. I also learned on this run that if your eye message, like there's a setting, okay, it may be, it may come up, like if you're not in someone's context, it may come up with your email. My email was super embarrassing, like it was a nickname that my dad gave me when I was born. It was like something something at iCloud.com. My first anaesthetist replied to my text. So like you have to text them the day before or whatever, being like, hey, like I'm in operating theatre, such and such. May I please like come and work with you, etc. Something like that. And so he replied back, hey, my nickname. And I was like, oh my gosh, how does he know, like, does he know me? Do I know this person? And then, like, he eventually told me that, like, he, it was coming out with my iCloud email and that I needed to change the setting and it was so embarrassing. He told, like, all the anaesthetists he works with, like, works with, <laughs> I'm stuttering, he told all the people he works with, like, the regs and stuff, and he would say it in front of the neurosurgeons, like, he would just yell out my nickname, like, how you doing? Um, but he was so lovely, such a great anaesthetist. Um, <laughs> but on this run, I was so fortunate to see so many female surgeons and um, even neurosurge registrars and anaesthetists, and this was super empowering to me. Um, then, my last one before COVID hit, I had two days of GP. Super lovely patients, loved the staff, it was so nice. Um, but I really liked the experience of getting my own room, coming up with a plan, like examining, taking history all by myself. And then basically I would even, you know, draft up a prescription, like sort of in the plan, you'd come up with what you would want to prescribe. And then the doctor will come in, see them for a few minutes, check what you've done and literally sign off the prescription if they think it's good. Then they go off and you feel like you've just seen a patient by yourself. I don't know, I felt like I had learned so much, like the learning curve even in two days was just crazy because like you really had to be like, oh they've come in with a sore throat, like I have to do my examinations, I have to ask these questions and like what am I going to prescribe if I'm going to prescribe anything. I really enjoyed that experience. Um, so you know, where am I now? Okay, it's lockdown, I only got to experience two days of GP. And I've done like a lot of the medical part, but I also just did anesthetics too, which is technically surgical. And like a lot of people are like, what do you want to do? I get asked this all the time and I still have no idea um, because I'm kind of realizing that your lifestyle and like the other aspects to your life are just as important, if not more. And I've kind of taken maybe the past six months to a year on focusing on myself and what's important to me and really getting to know myself. So yeah, medicine has been really great so far. I don't know what I'm going to do. So if you don't know what you're going to do, that is fine. Like that is okay. Um, and yeah, I am none the wiser as to what I will do. But I am overall like happy and I have grown so much since last year and I'm so grateful to have met the patients that I met. Like you really do feel like um, 
you have like an impact on their life and they have an impact on your life for like a moment in time even as a student and it's really special and I feel so blessed honestly I feel so blessed to just do what I do thank you so much for tuning in hope this was helpful in some way um and we'll see you in the next video bye